Chapter 3 of Dork in Disguise Social studies had just begun when the intercom speaker clicked on. Miss Robertson? It was a woman's voice. Yes, Miss Robertson called. Is Jerry Flack in your class? Miss Robertson's eyelashes fluttered and she turned to him. Yes, he is. Would you send him to the office, please? Sure, she spoke more softly now. Go ahead, Jerry. Come back as soon as you can. Jerry felt everyone's eyes on him as he got up and walked self-consciously across the front of the room and out the door. Of course, he knew what this was all about. Mrs. Barnaby had said that Mr. Meyer might call to the office about might call him to the office about the vandalism in his homeroom. His heart kablammed into his ribcage, and he realized fleetingly that his armpits were wet. The last time Jerry had been sent to the principal's office, he was in first grade. His teacher had been so impressed with him she had sent Jerry to read to him. Mr. Hovett had smiled while Jerry read him the story from the third grade reading book. He patted Jerry's shoulder and told him he'd done an excellent job. Jerry had found out later that his teacher thought he should be moved up to second grade. His parents had decided though, after visiting with a child development specialist, to leave Jerry with children his age. This time, Jerry wouldn't be getting compliments from the principal. He'd have to answer questions about finding his homeroom wrecked. He wondered if Mr. Meyer suspected that he and Craig had done it. How could he have been so stupid to let Craig talk him into messing up the classroom? He opened the heavy door to the main office and approached the counter on shaky legs. Two women, one gray hair, one with blonde hair, sat at desks on either side of the room. Yes, said the gray-haired woman. A chrome nameplate sat on her desk. It said, Mrs. Bruin. I'm Jerry Flack. I was, oh yes, have a seat. We're waiting for another student. Jerry sat in a plastic chair next to the wall. The door opened and Craig walked in. He grinned at Jerry and leaned over. We don't know nothing. Jerry looked at the floor and didn't respond. You boys may go in to see Mr. Meyer now, said Mrs. Bruin from her desk. Mr. Meyer's name was stenciled on a plaque above his door. Below that, it said, assistant principal. Jerry followed Craig into Mr. Meyer's office. Sit down, boys. Mr. Meyer sat behind his desk, a huge man who looked as if he could bench press a Buick SUV. The shiny, the shiny substance on his hair reminded Jerry of the polyurethane that had been applied to the wooden floor of his room in the old house a few years ago. Mr. Meyer had apparently chosen the high gloss finish. It reflected the light from the ceiling fixture overhead. Mr. Meyer didn't look happy. Which one of you is Craig? Me, Craig said. Mr. Meyer gazed out from under furry eyebrows. And you're Jerry Flack? Jerry nodded. I understand there was some vandalism in your classroom this morning. That's right, Mr. Meyer. Craig nodded and leaned forward in his seat. It was really a mess. Did either of you see anyone in or around the classroom as you came toward it? Nope. Craig said, nobody. How about you, Jerry? Did you see anyone? I didn't see anyone come out of the room, Jerry said, looking at Mr. Meyer's desk. I understand that the students have been gone only five minutes or so before the damage occurred, Mr. Meyer said. That's about right, Craig said. He turned to Jerry. Wouldn't you say about five minutes? Uh, yes. 
It's strange, don't you think, Mr. Meyer said, that someone who wasn't a student in that homeroom would run into the classroom and do all that damage and run out again and not be seen. Very strange, said Craig, nodding. He was very fast. Or she. It could have been a girl. Craig was obviously having fun with Mr. Meyer. Jerry wished that Craig would just shut up. At Hawthorne Middle School, we consider vandalism a very serious matter, said Mr. Meyer. When we catch a vandal, we're rough. Craig nodded again. And this is a particularly galling because this occurred on the first day of school. Mr. Meyer said the first hour of the first day, the first few minutes of the school year. Craig went on. I understand that if you were suspended twice at Hemingway Elementary, Craig, still looking as innocent as a newborn, nodded. I know Bob Brown, the principal down at Hemingway. Mr. Meyer said, leaning back in his seat, he doesn't suspend students for minor infractions. Mr. Meyer turned to Jerry. I don't know much about you. You're new in town, right? Yes. Now, Mr. Meyer leaned forward over his desk. I want you boys to know that I'm going to keep my eyes on you both. You even sneeze, and I'm going to find out about it. You got that? Yes, Craig said, nodding. How about you, Fleck? You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I'll be watching, and I'm warning you. One false move from either of you, and I'll kick your butts out the door. You got that? Yes, both boys said together. Remember that. Now, get out of here. Craig jumped up from his chair and smiled at Mr. Meyer. See you, Mr. Meyer, he said. I hope not. Jerry got up and walked out of Mr. Meyer's office, through the main office, and into the hall. Craig followed him. Once in the hall, he snorted. He thinks he's tough. He lowered his voice and mimicked Mr. Meyer. I'll kick your butts out the door. Jerry, who had never hit anyone other than his sister, had to restrain himself from slugging Craig in the mouth. He turned and headed down the hallway. Hey, where are you going, Flack? What do you think? Jerry growled, hurrying away. Back to class. Craig laughed and called out. Okay. Hey, we were really cool in there, weren't you? Weren't we? Jerry didn't bother to answer. Why were you called to the office, Brenda asked Jerry after third period math class. It was the second time she'd asked him. The first time he changed the subject. Someone messed up my homeroom, Jerry said. Mr. Meyer wanted to know if I had seen anyone coming out of the room. Oh, Brenda seemed satisfied. Hey, you want to have lunch together? We'll talk more about your cool lessons. Jerry had to admit that his efforts so far had been disastrous. He had only succeeded in getting himself in trouble with Mr. Meyer and making himself look foolish in front of Cinnamon. Besides, Brenda seemed awfully smart. Maybe she could help. What did, she, what did he have to lose? He shrugged. Okay, then he added, but don't you think this is like the blind leading the blind? Good point, Brenda said, but remember, a great football coach doesn't have to be a great fullback. I see what you mean, Jerry said. I just did something that a cool guy would do, Brenda said. What's that? I use the football metaphor. Cool guys talk about sports whenever they can, even to make a point about something else. I'll keep that in mind, Jerry said. Jerry and Brenda walked into the cafeteria. Oh, there are two of my friends, Brenda said. Come on, we'll sit with them. Jerry followed Brenda to a table at the side of the room. Two girls sat across the table from each other. One was the mirror image of the other. They both had frizzy brown hair that grew wild around their faces, like the manes on a couple of lions. Hi, Brenda. Sit down, one of the girls said. We want to fill this table with nice people. Yeah, no snobs, said the other girl. 
Guys, this is Jerry Flack. Brenda said, Jerry, this is Kim and Kat Henley. Hi, they said in unison. Unison. I'm the oldest, Kim said. Kat rolled her eyes. She always says that, but only by ten minutes. It doesn't matter by how much, Kim said. The fact is, I'm the older sister. She's with a mole on her cheek, Kat said. See? Now Kim rolled her eyes. It's not a mole, it's a beauty mark, she said. All the supermodels have them. It looks exactly like the one on my foot, Kat said. The doctor said it was a mole. Brenda jumped in. Let's get in line for lunch. They headed for the end of the line at the side of the cafeteria. Brenda said in Jerry's ear, Kim and Kat are two of the smartest kids in the whole sixth grade. Really? Yeah, but they seem dumb when they're together because they're always arguing about something stupid. They walked along the line. The cafeteria workers, all women with gray hair tucked into hairnets, handed them sloppy joes, green beans, fruit cocktail, and cookies. Jerry and the girls paid the woman at the cash register. Brenda nudged Jerry. Look who just made an entrance. He turned to look. Gabe Marshall, Jerry murmured. Gabe was fuzzy, but Jerry could pick him out when he squinted because of Gabe's red Adidas shirt. Jerry was pretty sure he was walking with the guy who had been rollerblading with him that morning. They strolled over to a table at the back and left their backpacks before heading for a second line on the other side of the cafeteria. Look at his hair, Brenda marveled. Any girl would kill for that hair. An accident is the gene pool, Jerry said. Of course. It could be chemically curled, Kim said. More guys are getting perms these days. He doesn't look like the perm type, Kat said, staring across the room at Gabe. Can you imagine him sitting in a salon chair under a hair dryer, surrounded by women in curlers? Jerry had to laugh. He couldn't picture it. Jerry saw Cinnamon then, sitting at a table not far from him. She'd already gotten her lunch, and along with three other girls at her table, she was watching Gabe. Brenda followed Jerry's gaze. Don't worry, she said. We'll get you so cool, Cinnamon will be begging you for her, your phone number. That was something else Jerry couldn't picture, but he liked the way it sounded. He liked it a lot.